They've won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone. So who's going to grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Stars in the Hi, Hello, I'm, t- I'm tapping to my F right now. Effie, yes. check your private chat for a section <laughs> for a minute. Um, for a oh, session? I don't know why. I just, <laughs> my dentures fell out. <laughs> I'm James Wesley. This is my husband, Seth Rudetsky, typing in private chat to all of the Effies. Yes, there are. Am I right? There are eight. I think it, well, nine plus me. <laughs> <laughs> that Including is true. Um, hey. Welcome to Stars in the House. Yes, it has been a day where it has been, been so fun. All day long in our house, dream girls, dream girls, you, um... dream girls. Listening to relentless dream girls music. Um, you guys, what is starts in the house? You may be asking yourselves. You may just be here because you're dream girls fans. It is a, ch- a charity live stream we began as soon as everything shut down in March. James and I were like, artists are going to need money. Everyone that works in the arts is going to need money. So we started a live stream. We started it twice a day. We've, we've now we're doing it once a day. We and, did that for three months. And then yeah. it was like, you know what, actually here's what happened. People went back to work. Uh, people <laughs> went back to work and it was sort of like, do we need to keep doing this twice a day? Yeah. Because people ha- were stuck in their houses at two o'clock in the afternoon. So we thought we had to be a connection for them, but then people started going back to work. So now we're at eight o'clock eastern which by the way i forgot to tell vanessa so vanessa that's another whole story she thought it was la time the point is we began this in march it is a fundraiser for the actress fund if you don't know what the actress fund does they help anybody in the arts so not only actors singers dancers but anybody backstage dressers i mean all these effies know those, those dressers the, the i'm changing costume dressers wig people makeup people anybody front of house house managers ushers anybody on the tv and film side um, caterers, best boys, script supervisors, whatever you do in the arts, you can go to actressfund.org and you can ask for help paying your rent, paying your medical bills, getting health insurance. And we just found out from the actress fund, if you've already gotten money from the actress fund, you can ask again. I mean, that's, that's how much people need and that's how much they're doling out. Well, it's been going on for a long time. We're entering what the 10th month. So yeah. So you go um, to actressfund.org if you need help, if you can give some help, go to starsinthehouse.com or text fund 2020 to five, six, five, one, two. And then forward your receipt and a message for one of the Effies. Yeah, well, for you, forward your receipt and then whatever you want to write. And we're going to have one of the Effies um, read it back. That's right. And you'll send it to donations at starsinthehouse.com. And also, Seth was so good. We're, we're you know, mo- 90% of the time we forget to All tell right. people to like, share, subscribe. Well, it sounds like it sounds someone goes, how are you? Like, it's lost all meaning. So like this video, because if you like it, it's going to help it be in the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to it because the more subscribers we get, the easier it is to call an Effie and say, we've got a trillion subscribers. Will you be on my show tonight? So please subscribe. And we're paid off. Tell everybody. Well, with the Waltons, I, I think we, in those three days, like right before and right after, 1,500 new subscribers and like 1,300 people like the video. I it's mean, it was really just, helpful. It, it was really helpful in addition to the amazing donations. And speaking of donations, by the way, Nancy sent something to read, and we should talk about how many we have also. Oh, well, we've raised. Um, what do you want to read those? Let me read this. Yeah, read those Oh, right this now. is from Carolyn Mike. Oh, my God, Carolyn Mike. They, she, they've been on our Broadway cruises. Great show. They're from New York City. They donated 50 bucks to the Actors Fund. Great show. Happy, healthy New Year. Love to Seth, James, Elizabeth, and Julie, and mm-hmm. Donna McKechnie. It's from yesterday. Right. Naomi from North Wales. People watch this all over the world. That's what's crazy about live streams. So this yeah. from North Wales, Long Island. No, North Wales, UK. Donated 25 bucks. Hi, Seth, James, and all. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and having a Happy New Year. So far, as we say in Wales, wow. <laughs> Natalie Glowen. I can't wait. James, I dare to read this. This is what they say in Wales. Natalie Glowen, I believe in he did da. He did uh, 23 and Me, and he's part British, so you should know how to read that. <laughs> Stars in the House every day has really kept theater alive, so thank you so much for that. I've donated in honor of Donna McKechnie. Last night, speaking of Michael Bennett, we had a whole Donna McKechnie Music in the Mirror fest. Tonight, we have a Michael Bennett Effie fest. And what did Donna McKechnie say that made your day? And I was made her. She said that Mike, she, because James was saying, oh, Seth is chewing gum, but Michael Bennett have kicked his ass. And she said, no, Michael would have. And he, she said, Jerry Robbins would have, but Michael Bennett would have would have let you stay in the room because he would have loved and admired your talent so much. 
It was very nice. I, I, I so worship Michael Bennett. I, I, it makes me cry. Like I'm so sad I never got to meet him. Completely obsessed with him. Um, okay, so anything, any other business we need to do? Uh, well, well, we're up to. Oh, well yeah, how over, much have we raised? Uh, uh, up to $650,000. We haven't gotten the total from last night, but we were like inching up to it. So let's just say we're around approximately $650,000 raised for the Actors Fund from stars in the house. And that's just donations from people like you. We don't have any corporate donations, people giving five, 10, 25 bucks. So really everything makes a difference. It's added up. $650,000 is a lot of bucks. Okay. Hey, let me, let me give me this mouse here, Seth, because before we bring on the Effies, now these are Effies from the uh, Michael Bennett production, whether right, Seth. So it was so whether the Broadway. It was, so these are all the basically replacement can, Effies from Broadway national tour, Bus and truck sits on LA company. It's all the original Michael Bennett, Bennett production, all the Effies from basically everywhere. Right. Um, but before we get to that, um, we did not get to this yesterday, but I will, I do have to call you out on, on something. Oh my God. Yes, I do. So, one of, if you know Seth, Seth loves candles. Talk about obsessed. He's a, as obsessed with candles as he is dream girls. Um, so, like, for example, for the holidays, my mom, this is actually was my grandmother's coffee can like i kept a few different things and um and she made like a candle right homemade candle when i went to montreal in december 2019 for a little writing retreat um i saw these that were really cool like for maple syrup right and because of course we're all in quarantine i ordered them for for set for the holidays <laughs> however set doesn't always I don't know, That's necessarily pay attention to what No 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 no. I'm sorry. When okay, you have a candle lit, when okay, you have a candle lit, you see it lit. This would would you know if this is lit or not? So I literally saw this and I'm like, oh, I better light it, forgetting I lit it hours ago. So I picked it up and it had been lit for hours and was like filled with like a ton of wax. Know, so I was like, ha! Ah! So so I basically it fell. There we go. It's you sideways. Turn it. No, no, I don't know. Well, so basically, it uploaded it. I don't know. It splashed everywhere, including on the wall. And James Schoolmarm style made me go on my hands and knees <laughs> and scrape it off the damn wall. Okay, and then. And then weirdly, two days later, I guess because he can't see it in this, that's a different story. My laptop was open and it was blocking oh. it. So I moved my laptop back and the lit candle again fell. It was kind of weird two days later and hot wax got all over the right. screen. So that's like right here in front of us. It was right. also on. It was on By the, the way, as well. still there. And this is what the carpet looks like right now at our feet. That's right. Well, I have to iron it with a piece. Anyway, I don't know why. That's I'm where with this, I was like, you know what? Wax is the hardest thing to clean up. You're on your own. I don't know why I'm trending. Like why I keep spilling hot wax everywhere. Didn't Madonna do that in her book, SEX? Or that <laughs> remember like when she like erotic? When she pouring hot wax on people? I don't know. So I've got the Madonna thing happening. Anyway, All thanks right. James for busting me. Tomorrow will be really fun when I bust you for something. Guess what? Okay. We don't, I don't have a show, show tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> I have my concert tomorrow with <laughs> yeah, Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady, that's right. That's uh, everybody at You can bust me to Wayne Brady. Um, okay. We oh, got, speaking of Wayne Brady though, hold on. Because um, because one of our effies, I asked David to to uh, upload this real fast. Was well, two of the effies we have pictures of besides the Dream Girls connection was Keisha Lewis did a reading of my play in Broken Circle, and I'm on there because Wayne Brady was going to do my part, um, and I and I replaced him. So there's Keisha All and right, Carly hi. Hughes and and Audra, and um, that was a great reading, and and, and uh, Lacrita. It was it was so fun. Um, so that was that. And then Roz Ryan, another Effie, went with us to the DNC. That's me saying what the world needs now is love. That's Len Carey, my friend Paul Castry. Hi, yes. Roz. Yes, I just I just thought that was fun. So we I go way back with the Effies. Profess. That's right. All right. So I'm very excited that donations are hot wax. I've seen girls pour hot wax in themselves. All right. By the way. Yeah, it's not knocking something over. I picked up a lid. Can't we'll talk about it privately. All right. <laughs> so listen, Effies. I'm gonna bring you all on. I'm. I wanted just before I bring you guys on, you guys to watch this clip. This is what a big deal it is that these women were cast as Epi. This is Michael Bennett talking about um, casting Epis. And okay, and if you were if you were seeing what I was seeing right now, the number of clips. I'll be sitting back on the couch with Mandy. I've been this working point. all day to get he these has clips. He's been working all day. So send those donations in in honor of these Effies and Seth's hard work. Today. So Effie is like Effie is one of you know to me it's like Effie, Evita, Alphaba. Actually, all E roles, and they all have to belt ease. It's really like the like top top hardest roles ever on Broadway, a hundred percent. So this is how hard it is to get the role. This this newscaster saying to Michael Bennett like, oh, is it hard to choose between twenty women for the role? And he's like, no, because barely anybody can play it. Listen to what he says. Mm. 
It's only hard to make a decision when you have 20 people who would be great for a role and you're trying to decide which one should play it. Does that happen very often? I know, I've never had. <laughs> With all the auditioning <laughs> and all the people that I've ever seen, I've never been down to where I thought one of 20 would be great in a role. No, it's always been a, a one out of two or three, maybe. That's Michael Bennett. Wow. One out of two or three, and all these women were those ones out of two or three <laughs> that got to play Effie. So I'm very excited to introduce all of our Effies for tonight. First, Ms. Roz Ryan. This is her second appearance on the show. Hi, Roz. And it's a black screen. Okay. Oh, I think her Wi-Fi is out. Yeah, that was such an undramatic. Okay. I know. Okay, well, I'm gonna, we can see her, but it's frozen. So David, yeah. Okay. David so we'll get Roz. That was hilarious. I've never seen a bigger anticlimax. <laughs> okay. So how about? I think this was. I think Julia. Julia, were you the first replacement for Jennifer? I think you were, Ms. Julia McGirt Nixon. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Julia. Hi, Hi guys. So nice to meet you. Okay, here come some more of your fellow Effies. Okay, now Vanessa's going to be kind of crazy. I gave her the wrong time. I gave her, I said 8 o'clock, forgetting she lives in L.A. So right now she's in a car and hopefully not going to have an accident doing this. Please welcome oh, Vanessa geez. Townsell. Again, black screen. But we can see her. Vanessa, you'll come back. Yes. Julia, so far, it's just you and me. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's another Effie that was on the road as far as I know. And boy, did she sound good. Please welcome Yvette Quezon. Hi, Yvette. Hi, I was on the road with the international tour, hi, and I also, hi, Julia, and um, I went back to Broadway, too, with the Broadway okay. on the uh, Ambassador Theater, so. And by the way, so far, you win for um, Best Sound Quality. Listen, a girl has to get her studio right. These are, we in a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, you got it going on, but, but Yvette's winning right now. Okay. <laughs> And now also on L.A. time and posting delicious vegan meals on Facebook, mm -hmm. please welcome my old pal I've known since the 80s, Miss Fuchsia. Hey, hey, girl. Hey, beautiful people. Hey, girl. How's it going? I, and I, you know, with what uh, Yvette said, I, we were actually on the same tour together. Yep. Yes, we were. I met that beautiful diva. Oh, and ditto. Yeah. And she, became, I mean, she became this fierce cook right up the road from me. I, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, we all talk. I want to talk about cooking ASAP. Okay, and now let me welcome, as far as I know, the youngest Effie ever to play the role. Please welcome Ms. Keisha Lewis. Yes. What's up, kids? Oh. Hi, beauty. Hi, Keisha. Hi, Keisha. Hi, oh my gosh. Hi. Hi. Matt. Hi. Hi. Oh, this is so fun. Nixon either. Hi, Julia. Hi, how are you? We're gonna get all these women together. Y'all might not be able to hear a thing, uh, Seth. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try Roz Ryan again. Roz, I will you look a little frozen to me though? She looks frozen. You wanna, bring on. On, you wanna bring on Sharon? Yes, hold on. Ro oh no, Roz, well, you're sort of moving. All right, let me. Oh, yeah, bring her on. Bring her. Let's see what happens. Roz, you look one, like you're two, moving three. now. One, two, three, Roz Ryan. My screen just went away. There she Ooh. is. Who is Roz Ryan? Hi. Oh Hi. 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 Yes, dear. Hi. Hi, dearie. Hi, darling. Hi, oh, my God. goodness. Years and years. <laughs> you said years and years. Yes. yes. Hello, lovely. Miss Yusha. Hello, beautiful. Why Hi, Hi, beautiful. Oh. Hi, beautiful. Hi, beautiful. Hi, beautiful. I have to see oh, Miss oh. Roz Ryan. I think that far okay. from me. Okay. I know, I know. We shed a we shed a nausea too. We a noodle too or drink. Open these restaurants back I know. Roger, right your face here. is frozen in full sass. Okay, there it goes. Um <laughs> you, got you got the glasses. And now let me My welcome an FD again. who's good. No, you're well, you're back. Although I hear a little bit of crackly. What's with the Wi-Fi? What's what's with the Wi-Fi? Are you on an iPhone? You're on a laptop? What do you want, girl? I'm on a computer. I'm on a Mac. A <laughs> red Mac. Mac. Oh, it usually works really well. I'm in well. my house. Huh? All right. I, I don't know what the crackling is. I'm gonna have David help you. Now let me welcome the FB that I listened to her bootleg relentlessly that <laughs> Evan Pappas gave me. I cannot. I had this cassette tape over and over again. The amazing Sharon Catherine Brown. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sharon Houston and I were on the same tour. Yeah. We were on the same tour. And all oh, my God. Day. Look who's watching you all. 
This is from Adrian Bailey. Hey, hey, Adrian. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Adrian. hey, Adrian Bailey. Oh, oh, my my gosh. Gosh. I did. Oh, he goes with Adrian twice. Oh, he's, uh, he's used. Everybody's here. Okay, I'm going to see if Vanessa's back. Vanessa. Oh, I see a blank screen. I think David's oh, working on okay. it. Not it. Okay, so here's what we started. have to do. Someone's trying to answer this. Oh, that means wait, hold on. Let's kick somebody out. Someone's trying to enter the studio. Now I think this is hold on. Wait, am I I feel like I'm missing somebody? Yeah, Bubba is. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> you. Okay, so hold on. David Katz is here, but he but he actually I don't know if David Katz can stay. Okay, hold on, guys. I'm gonna talk out loud for a second. Right, David, you can stay. Yeah. Okay, what about poor do you have to boot Vanessa? David, you work on it. Um, okay, well, Lilius is coming. So here's what we have to do. What we normally we're we're also on Sirius Radio. So Sirius Radio pays for the show to be on, and the money from Sirius Radio goes to our little staff, our tech team, and our social media people. So we're on Sirius Radio on Monday. But my point is, Sirius doesn't like it if a lot of people are talking because it's on the radio, and they're like, "Who the hell is speaking?" So we have to sort of like basically everyone like sort of stare while someone else is talking, and then when you want to <laughs> talk, you can wave or like inhale but just so we know so it's not a lot of people going i know that was so much fun and then it's just the the radio people crash their car um okay speaking of crashing cars vanessa is she mm, oh wait oh there's there she Lilius. is okay here's i think here's Hi, my Lilius. second my second effie i saw vanessa first and here comes miss Lilius white <laughs> and she's on mute <laughs> Lilius, it's an anti-climax <laughs> unmute hold on you gotta unmute yourself lady Take it up the octave. Hold on. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi, y'all. Are we getting anybody? One, Hi. one, two, three, can four, five. Can you hear five. me? Yes, we can hear yes. you. Yes, Hi, queen. Family. Hi, family. Hi, family. How y'all doing? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, honey. The only thing I wish we were all in person for this, this is, oh. It's killing me that I can't hug these sisters. Yeah, I know, right? It really I was crazy. actually, I, yes, we need to do this after. I was thinking Absolutely. when everything comes back, we Absolutely. all need to get together, right? That's right. In, in my great. studio. <laughs> With a full band. Okay, so James, you wanted to ask the first question. We were talking. James, well, go first. Well, I'm going to, I'm gonna. this is a question for all of you, and I'll just, for especially for our, our serious XM listeners, I'll go to each one down the, sc uh, down the screen, but the, the most basic question, which is, how did you get the gig? Because we know yes. each of you had, each one of you has an amazing story. So that's going to be basically take up the first hour. <laughs> Roz. <Yeah. laughs> you go first, Roz. Roz, <laughs> Roz Ryan. Yeah, it's a funny story. I auditioned for Dream Girls five times. Oh. And each time there was something going on with Jen. Ken Hansen would call me and say, come down, come down to 890, get down here. And I got turned down five times. So I was in Manchester, England, and my, my agent called and he said, Michael Bennett wants to talk to you. And I said, okay. And Michael Bennett called and he said, okay, you won. And I said, I won. And he said, yeah, you, you got the show. We're gonna send you to California. And I said, I can't go to California. I just got married. So Jen went to California, and he gave me the show. So Bobby, you did Jen. it on Broadway? No, actually, I was after Julia. I was okay. after you, Julia, or Vanessa. So if people don't I, know Jen. Vanessa came first, and then I came. And then you came. OK, so I came in after Julia, but he kept right auditioning me. And one day he told me, and I'll say this <laughs> with a joke. One day he told me I was a fishing little pond in the oh. nightclubs. And one day Michael said to me, he said, you're not vulnerable enough to be Effie. And I said, wow. So um, then he called in Manchester and said I had the job. But that was about Why three years later. Why were you wow, in Manchester, England? I was doing a tour of Ain't Misbehaving. I love that show. Okay, so I you do. got it. It didn't sound so you audition and audition and audition, and you finally got it. And by the way, people are curious what um Ross sounded like. I just have a little clip I'd love to play you because everyone thinks of of um Effie as this big loud singing, which by the way it is, but Effie also has to be very vulnerable. And I love this little clip that I found of just Ross sounding so beautiful. Listen to this one. You found me.
Then it gets big. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was such a young puppy. <laughs> Let me I'm ask, by the way, just here. You sound amazing, Roz. It's so beautiful. Hey, let me ask all of you Effies. Someone named Jackie keeps trying to enter the studio. Is that anybody you guys know? Who? Is that a, Jackie, J A Q or something? It keeps coming up. It's so odd because it, it winds up kicking people out. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. I thought maybe it's a friend of yours that didn't know the link to watch. All right, moving on. Because um, that's happened before. Yeah, it's happened before. Intruder. All right, so, <laughs> intruder, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Julia McGirt-Nixon, how did you get the gig? You got to unmute. I got the gig by one of those. Oh. I got the gig by doing a uh, cattle call. And... Um, they came to Washington, D.C., and I was, like, one out of, like, 5,000 people, and I auditioned. And um, wow. at the end of the audition, Michael and Clevant Derricks and a few others told me that I had the role. Ha-ha. <laughs> what, what did you sing for the audition? Um, I sang some of I'm Not Going, and um, I, I don't know. I think it was something pop, but I can't remember. That was a long time ago. <laughs> and you and you found out that day? Oh. Oh, wow. She was offended by that one. No, she <laughs> lost the Wi-Fi. <laughs> All right, on to the next. <laughs> Yvette, how'd you get the gig? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So like Julia, and I don't know if we were in the same cattle call, but um, I was Miss DC Black America in uh, 1981. And so um, three and girls, yes. Yes. And, and so they came, I guess that was the national tour. The national tour came and my voice instructor said, you should go in and audition for um, Dream and I had just seen the opening when Entertainment Tonight had done the thing with Jennifer. And I was like, I gotta do this show. So anyway, I went to the, um, is that me? I'm not sure where the echo is coming from. Maybe everybody, everybody oh, mute yourself sorry. if you're not talking. Oh. And so um, I went and auditioned. I auditioned like Roz, I auditioned four times. I came back, I went back. And by the fourth time, I was so annoyed. And I remember this, and I guess this speaks to my youth too. Um, I had a little, I guess a little attitude. So I said to Michael, and at that time you could smoke in the studio. Do you guys remember? This was an 890 and he was smoking. And he said, well, you gonna sing for us today? And I said, well, you've heard everything. I don't know, what do you wanna hear? <laughs> and I, it was like one of those moments I just happened. And, and he said, you don't have to sing anything. You good, you had the job. And I was like, oh. all I had to do? But I, I I, don't know if he needed, you know, with Michael, I don't know if he needed to see that. I literally did not sing that day. And I went back home. I waited, got the call to come. And I was blown away. I was actually, and I... I don't know what... Sorry, that got clicked. That's I know how that got clicked. I was like, and, and now... Yeah, right. Um, I was Sharon's understudy. I understudied Sharon because Sharon was Effie, and I also did it with Lilius as well. Oh. So, um, yeah, and and he told me one of the things I remember opening night of our tour. Um, he said, "You will go on, just be ready." And that it was like, "You'll go on, and but be ready." And I'll never forget that. And um, and I did, and I did. How can you not? That role is an effing killer. Well, I'm I can't, I'm gonna be playing clips of all of you, um, Miss Fuchsia. How did you get the gig with your nice red background? Unmute, lady. Unmute. Yeah. Uh, where am I? Yeah, oh, he on mute. Yeah. yeah, he's on. I don't do technical stuff. Um, how much time you got? Um, I was <laughs> doing, you know, I was in um Atlantic City doing um Uptown that's hot with Maurice Hines, and um, let me start off saying I didn't know what Dream Girls was. 
I was trying to get a gig in Little Shop of Horrors um, with Johnson Lift when we were rehearsing at 890. And he told me right at that audition, he said, um, I'm not gonna use you for this movie. I want you to audition for Dream Girls. And I was mad because I really wanted to do that. So I go downstairs and I, I, I went to the cast down in there and I was like, he want me to audition for some show called Dream Girls. And they looked at me and called me a dummy because I didn't know what it was. <laughs> Long story short, I was sick coming from Atlantic City. So I auditioned um, for Vinny first at, uh, at a um, non-equity, no, no, at an equity audition and I wasn't equity and so, they, the people in the room knew this and they gave me attitude about it. And I sang and I'm telling you, and I guess the callback was at 890 with um, Michael Bennett, who I didn't know. I didn't know any of those guys, never heard their names before. Michael Bennett, Michael Peters, didn't know who they were. Didn't, I guess I didn't really care. And um, I was actually sick coming from Atlantic City. I couldn't sing. And I literally walked in there with my suitcase because I got off the bus with my not I don't know the show I got off the bus with my suitcase I looked a mess and I walked in and I literally said I'm tired and I don't feel well what do I have to sing and they just stopped <laughs> they looked at me and I looked at them and I said I don't feel well I don't feel well I'm tired I just got off. I've told them the whole story and they laughed I sang and I couldn't get the notes out for and I'm telling you but Mike but um Johnson Lift was there to I guess vouch for me and I said, I told you I can't sing today. And um, they called me and told me that I had the role of understudying Sharon Brown, along with them. Um, I was with uh, Yvette on that tour. Likewise. And also, I also did it with Lilius as well. Um, and um, the writers would come to uh, come on tour and come to my hotel room, give me teddy bears and say, you're going to go on one day, but you need to choose a voice. And I said, what do you mean? They said, you have so many colors. And I said, I don't want to choose a voice. I want to use what I have and we'll just deal with then. And they, I got the job. So I guess my ignorance was bliss at that moment. So that was my story of how I got the job and a hard job, I must say. So basically, if you act like Effie at the audition. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. But I mean, I didn't know who she was. I, I'd never heard of the show. I didn't know the people. And I really just went in there honest and just told them I was sick and I was tired and I didn't know what was going to come out my mouth. How did you know, and I'm telling you, if you didn't know the show? Well, that was with Johnson Liff. When I went to audition for Little Shop of Horrors, he said to me, I want you to audition for Dream Girls. And I didn't know what it was. I went downstairs and I complained to the cast of um, Uptown is Hot. And they all, they were, I was green. I was green. They were very, they were veterans. And they explained to me what it was. And I said, they want me to sing a song. And they said, what they want you to sing. And I, and I said, I don't know. And they said, well, you better sing. And I'm telling you. And so I heard, I've heard the song before, but I didn't know okay. it was from the show. I'm, you know, I was, from, I'm not from New York. So I was from, you know, Baltimore and I wasn't thinking about musicals, you know, while I was in Baltimore. Um, and um, I learned, I heard the song, I learned the song and I went and sang it and that was it. And the rest is high notes. Yeah, and then it's okay. next time. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, emotional high notes. Oh, God, what a hard role. All right, Keisha Lewis, have we heard your story yet? No, let's hear it. Okay, so um, like so many, uh, six auditions. Um, I did not have an agent. I was uh, 17, no, 16 when I started auditioning. I graduated a, a bit of an overachiever. I graduated high school at 16. And I went to the High School of Performing Arts on 46th Street, uh, where the Imperial is. And one of my teachers my senior year said, there's this show that you need to see. There's a role for you. So fast forward, maybe six months later, or maybe less, my boyfriend at the time took me for my birthday to see Dreamgirls, blown away. So I said, I have to audition for this. I was going to NYU um, for the theater, Circle in the Square. So I was right close, right in the mix. So I would get backstage and show business newspapers every Thursday and mm. audition every time Dream Girls came up. I went to open calls. I got wow. cut before I opened my mouth, just on and on and on. Oh. Also, because I'm a bit of a don't say no to me type person, I got Vinnie Lift's phone number. Uh -huh. The casting director. The casting director. God rest his soul. I called him once a month and said, hi, I'm Keisha Lewis. I'm your Effie. Don't forget me when you're ready. He was like, okay, whatever. So he called. 
two years later, after all those open calls, when I was 18 and said, all right, little girl, you're going to get your shot. Michael Bennett, Michael Peters want to meet you. So I went to 890. I auditioned. And my funny story with Michael Bennett, I was I was shaking because I knew who Michael Bennett was. Uh. Um, and I sang and I'm telling you and I sang I am changing. And then he said, can you step touch for me? And I said, what now? He said, step touch. Can you step touch? And I said, I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Michael Bennett got up from behind the table. He came over to where I was, mm. held my hand, and he went, step, touch. <laughs> step, <laughs> touch. So I did step, touch, step, touch. And then he said, now faster. He said, now add your hips. Now add your hands. And he was doing this. Wow. So I was doing this. And he said, okay, you're done. And Vinny Liff, it was me and one other lady. And Vinny Liff came out and he said, well, they've made their decision. Do you want to know now or later? I said, now. She said, later at the same time. And Vinny Liff said, well, because the person who got the job said, now, Keisha, it's you. <gasps> and I went to the theater that night. Wait, who was the other person? I don't remember her name. Keisha, there's so many questions and we have to get to, to Sharon and Lilius, but I have to ask, in all, in, for two years and you keep going in and going in, did they ever give you feedback and say, Keisha, you need to work on this? Nope. Once I went in, I remember there was an open call. It was a cattle call at the Minskoff and they lined us up across. It was like all these effies. And they said, one stay, 11 stay, nine stay, 10 stay. All the rest of you, thank you for coming. So I never sang. Oh, so there were six calls, maybe two or three of them were like that. And other ones, they would let me do eight bars of either. And I'm telling you, or I am changing. And that was it. So, so then he knew I could sing it. I got gotcha. you. 18 and years old, 18 years old. And he was kind enough to tell me what to wear to that audition. He said, you know, that blue oh. dress that you wore like an audition for, you need to wear that. Cause that's, that's cute for Effie. So Ah, uh, people. Uh -huh. Vinny Lip was just one of uh, one of the kindest casting directors. I, I love hearing that. Oh, everybody loves him. All right, amazing story. We're gonna get to some clips of you. How about Ms. Sharon Katarina Brown? Hi, Sharon. <laughs> unmute. Oh, do I, I got to mute you? Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> First of all, Seth James. I just have to tell you, I laugh at you guys all the time. Uh, I'm gonna tell my story, but I love you guys so much. And also uh, Fuchsia and I haven't seen each other since before the lockdown and I, I miss you friend and Yvette, my heart, um, I just, so, and I love all of you so much. I literally, I know Lilius, Roz, like Keisha, like we're all friends mm -hmm. and we've known each other forever and I love them so much, so dearly. And this is amazing and I, I, I told David if I weren't in Dream Girls, I would have been watching this. I would have been one of the people. So because this is epic. This is like Dream Girls is the best show ever. I don't care what anybody says. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and see. So now my story. Um, I have a completely different story um, uh. because I auditioned once, but I auditioned for every role except Curtis in one day. I'm, <laughs> I'm not really joking about that. So it starts with Michael Peters because Michael Peters goes so far back with my family. So literally he he's, was like my godfather. He watched me grow up. So I, I, he, he, I mean, he's family, was family. It will always be. And Michael so, Peters was Michael Bennett's co-choreographer, people don't yeah. know. Yes. So I remember when he came over to the house to tell mom that he he got dream girls, you know, but it was this thing. It was this thing. You know, it was this. I'm doing this thing. And, you know, so that's so when it became a hit and everything, it was like, oh, my, you know, it was just so amazing. And I was also I was I was either I think I was either. 2021, 20, I think I was 21 when, so when I auditioned and I auditioned all day. Uh, it wasn't le legitimately all day, but Michael Peters knew my family so well 
and the fact that we're all in show business and he knew how I was trained and raised. And so he, with love, kind of threw me to the lions. It was mm -hmm. like he knew because I'm not, um, no one wanted me to play this role because I, I just didn't fit the mold at the time. And so he did this and Michael Bennett was there. And if, the fact that you guys are mentioning Vinnie Lift, he was my champion for my whole career until he mm. passed. And at the same time, I auditioned for Grizabella and it was leaning toward them so much liking me. And he was like, Michael Bennett will kill me. He said, you just, he said, we just have to go in this direction. <laughs> and I was upset at the time because I was like, there are no black Grizabellas. Foolish, you know, when you're young, you don't know anything. And um, I sang every song, every Laurel song, every Dina song, every Effie song. I wanted Effie, but it was just like, if you, you, you all know, but for people watching who may not know, Broadway is where the big boys play. Hmm. And it's eight shows a week. And it's, it's like, if you can't get through an audition, obviously you're not, you know, so, so I did eight shows a week in one audition. I mean, we literally, they're only Curtis. I and and did not audition for. I did, and I was told. I think it was the the next day. I don't think it was that day. So my my experience is is different, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I have the distinction, with the exception of two weeks that they sent me to Japan. I never mm -hmm. missed a show. Mm -hmm. But the two weeks that I went to Japan ahead of our cast, our company. Um, Yusha and Yvette, uh, you know, kicked so much butt and just, you know, are amazing. And this isn't um, my my a part of my story, but I also just, you know, you just have to know how talented all of these women are. They have to be. Uh, because the thing is, uh, Fuchsia, I just want to say, Fuchsia was also the first and maybe only, I don't know of another one, African-American, Madame Tenardier in Les Mis. I just want to start on Broadway. This is what we had in our family, you know, like this, we have all these amazing people. And every time, you know, this, when you audition and you get it, you know, um, and when we opened, cause we were on the road first and then we went to Broadway uh, later, but we really, we did the, the, all of America and then Japan and Michael Bennett, somebody presented him with the key to the city in one of the cities we were in and he gave it to me. Oh, nice. oh uh, my God. Yeah, so I just missed it. Uh, like, but that, that was, uh, is the story of, you know, a lifetime. And Sharon, oh. I love that you mentioned Fuchsia being Madame Tenardier because I just happened to have this. Basically, this is if Effie lived in France and she was a crank ass. Well, Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh I miss God. that show. I tell you, I never thought I'd miss a show, but I do miss that show. I had fun doing that show. First of all, mm -hmm. <laughs> groundbreaking. Long, but fun. I, I miss that show. I do that show without a problem. I, I like you still, show. you still could. All right, Lilius, we've got we've got to hear your story. Everyone has their own crazy story. Lilius, haul it out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened here. Can you hear Shit. us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Okay, I just can't see you. All of a sudden, the computer went bye-bye. Right. So anyway, I 
auditioned at the urging of a friend of mine, uh, Stanley Ramsey. He's gone now. But Stanley Ramsey had gone, had gone to see Dream Girls and he said, You got to go and audition for the show. And they have auditions for the company, for the traveling company. And uh, so I said, Well, okay, you know, all right. I had just had a baby and I was really not that interested. But anyway, I went to the audition and Greg Hunter was my musical director. He was the one that helped me with the audition. And I wish you could see me now because, oh, oh, here I am, okay. We can see you. You can see me now. So Greg Hunter and I got together and put the audition t uh, piece together and I went in, I went in to, to get the role of Laurel. Because after I saw the show, I had no interest in being happy. I saw the show and I wanted to wear that dress that Laurel wears with the, that, that lavender dress that has the thing goes on like that flows all around like that. That's all I wanted. I wanted to wear that dress. So I went in as Laurel, and I sang, the first song we sang was Ain't No Way. The refrain was Ain't No Way. And as it happened, we were at 8-9, and it was vines and blinds. The sun came through the vines at this particular moment. Stop trying to be someone you're not. And so the light was on my face, and then when we finished the song, he said we're well, invited to Ain't No Party. And when we got to, it's been seven years, and it don't take a smile to realize that even though my man throws confetti in my face, still don't make it no party. So I grabbed my crotch and threw the confetti. And Michael Peters looked at Michael Bennett, and Michael Bennett looked at Michael Peters, and their heads came together like this, and they were like, So they said, wow, we've never started seen it done like that before. <laughs> I said, well, okay. So they said, well, you know, that was very nice, but we want you to come back and audition for Effie. And I said, no, I, I don't want to audition for Effie because I don't sing like that. And I'm not going to gain, I was, I was like size six, seven, snatched. And so I thought, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to gain 200 pounds. I'm not going to do this. Blah, 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 right? So they're looking at me like, who is this chick <laughs> telling us what she's not going to do, what she don't want to do at this audition? So they said, okay, don't worry about any of that. Just learn that you stuff and come back. So I came back. And the next audition was, Vinny Liv had called me, wonderful Vinny Liv. And he said, they want to see you as happy. I want you to come in. I got there. I had the flu. I was sick as a dog. And I had a, a powder blue turtleneck with the sparkles in it, stripes like this, and some fire inch red leather pants. I went in there, and I sang. They had me sing every single note. They had me sing everything. What about what I want all that? Every single thing. And at the end of it, I had to sing, I'm telling you. Well, by that time, my, my, my lungs were hurting. My throat was. So I finished the song and I said to Michael Bennett and Michael Peters, I said, Look, I have the flu. And, you know, they said, Yeah, we know. We know you're sick. You're either sick or you're a drug addict. So I'm looking at that. What? Who says that to somebody? Right. At an audition. So they said, Don't worry about it. Michael comes over me, puts his arms around me. And he says, you're going to go, you're going to stay, you're going to go to L.A., you're going to stand by for Jen, you know you'll go on. And I said, L.A.? I said, I, I don't want to go to L.A. He says, I don't drive a car, I don't have any family there, and I don't want to go to L.A. I said, why don't you send Sheila Ellis? Because I knew Sheila Ellis was from California, and she wanted to go to California. And I said, why don't you send Sheila Ellis to L.A., and I'll just stay here. I said, I'll stay here on a pink contract. That's how badly I did not want to go to Los Angeles. So they, they, they start shaking their heads, and they're like, no, the gig is in LA. And, and Michael Bennett said to me, don't worry, anything you need, you'll have. At that point, I needed a babysitter. I needed to learn how to drive a car, because I'm a New York City girl. I grew up taking the subways and the buses. I didn't know how to drive a car. I didn't know how to ride around and walk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got 
the gig. And I went to California and they didn't lie. Everything I needed, they, they provided for me. Babysitter, I, Lawrence Clayton taught me how to drive. He, he came through and you went on and boy, did you get reviews. And so what happened was I, I was going, I, we went, we were running for about two weeks and Jennifer said she couldn't do all these because we had five show weekends in LA. And she said, I can't do all these shows back to back. So Michael said, okay, fine. So Michael brought me in as an Effie matinee, matinee Effie, and brought the reviewers back in to re-review the show with me as Effie. And the cast was kind of filled with her because she had been kind of nasty and rough with them. So they took the reviews and completely called on. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't really sit real well with her, but but that's what the kids did. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Yeah. So anyway, that's how I got to do Effie. And then we were in LA for about 11 months and we were supposed to sit there for two years. Jennifer missed a lot of shows. And at that time, um, LA was a, not a theater town. So people would get dressed up and take their furs out of the vaults and all that kind of stuff to go to the theater. And if your name was above the title, that's who they wanted to see. So I would come out as Effie on some of those occasions when she was out and I would see the backs of people's heads walking up the aisle, going out of the theater to the box office to get their money back because they weren't going to see her. So anyway, we went on like that for about 11 months and then they decided they were going to close the show in LA because they, they were losing money. And uh, they didn't do a contract and they offered me the, the role of Effie going forward. So we left from there. We went to San Francisco, Chicago, and uh, Broadway. That was that. And came back to Broadway. Came back to Broadway. Went to Paris. Went to Paris. And then we came back to Broadway. Everyone's waving. Okay. Oh, and Julia's back. I have to show a clip before we bring that up. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're gonna have our medical break in a second. But you wanted to show us. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have our medical break in one Dr. second. LePou. We have Doctor Lapoo. Well, Chief Medical Correspondent Doctor Lapoo comes on and gives us a COVID update. Oh, it's, not, oh, okay. it's not an exam, <laughs> but uh, oh, chill out, ladies. <laughs> but I want to just show this this clip quickly. You know, a lot I'm of you know. No, don't worry about that. So I did this controversial version of Dream Girls with Lily. As you see, I'm. I'm I'm wearing this shirt right now, and it all happened. I'll show this quick clip because I did a fundraiser for the Gay and Lesbian Synagogue, and Lilius, you know the modulation? Um, Effie, we've all got pain for seven years. I sung with you. And Lilius held the G, vibrated it, and then went back to it. And I so flipped out over it that I was like, I now have to do a concert with you on Broadway. So I have the moment where she does it. I mean, if you can see me, I'm on, I'm sitting on the piano on the side. You see me stand up and scan the audience to see if anyone else heard it. But instead of, <laughs> most people just go for seven years because it's so effing high. He holds it, brought as it goes back to it. So here's a little clip of it. I don't sing like that. Okay, Lilius, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so because of that benefit that I did for Yeah. Damn. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that before. Okay, ladies, now's your time to touch up, get a glass of water. We're going to take a breaky poo for our medical update, and then we're going to see you all soon with clips. So get ready for some fun clips from the past. You're going to love it. Okay. Right, I'm for a minute. Miss Fuchsia, Miss Keisha. Ms. Lilius, Ms. Ryan, Ms. Sharon Katerine. And now our chief medical correspondent. Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, Dr. LaPook is gone. This is hilarious. Everyone's having Wi-Fi problems. Guess who's coming back? Our Effie. <laughs> Miss Julia. Miss <laughs> Lilius. This well, is hold on, hold on. Wait. No. Hold on, because I, I, we, we need to find out. Hold on, uh, Julia. Okay, hold on, Julia. We'll we need back to find out. There, oh, there he is. is. Hold on. Dr. LaPook. We thought one, two, three. We were like, we knew we made you wait for a long time. We're like, either he gave up or his Wi-Fi conked out. He waited so long. No, when, whenever you play a clip, it freezes on me on my browser for some reason. 
reason. Oh. And I loved when you said Lily was so effing high. I get it, effy, effing high. Yes. yes, I'm trying to not curse and also put an homage to Lilius. So hold on a second. Dude, 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 to Effie, that's what I meant. Um, people over 75 can start getting the vaccine in New York. I'm extremely excited. I'm, I'm basically a year away. But what do people need to do if they're over 75? Because so many New Yorkers are watching this show. How do they get there? They go to their their um their doctors. So I'm at NYU Langone Health. Anybody there or at a major medical center, there's a thing called my chart, and they don't have to do anything. They're on the list and they're gonna get notified. And I'm told that we're gonna start giving this out next week. And in the next couple of weeks, they expect to get through that 1B group. Every hospital system has its own communication system. So Interesting. what I would suggest for everybody across the country, because everybody's different in each state, is uh, Google your local health department, either your state health department or your county, lo you know, the local uh, health department, and, and try to figure out what's going on in your local place. Um, they're saying people like at NYU Langone, they're saying, please don't call your doctor because they're just, you know, they're going to get a million different uh, phone calls. But instead, we're going to contact you. But I can't say that that's true everywhere. So I would say contact your doctor or your health provider and, and see, you know, what's the story. It's going to start being available, uh, you know, at, at these pharmacies. And what I'm hearing from the Biden folks is that they're going to have a big effort to do a federally organized dissemination program that's going to be much better. Right, so, uh, right. Keep your keep your fingers. And they're gonna they're gonna release it, but they're not gonna hold back and hold that second half. You know the millions of doses. It's a new strategy. It's a little controversial, but they're saying, you know what, we're in trouble right now. Let's just anything we have, let's get it out there. Doctor Lapuk, there's uh, uh, there's so much going on that I, it, I'm overwhelmed. So I'm so happy that emotionally I'm overwhelmed with everything going on politically in our nation's capital, COVID wise. So I'm so happy that you have this clip, and I'm looking forward to your to your the, to CBS Sunday Morning tomorrow because of the piece. Describe what it is for those who were who weren't here yesterday, and then we have a, a little bit of a clip, right, to show. Yeah, we do. It's it's a very unusual thing that happened. So CBS Sunday Morning, it's an hour and a half. It's from nine to ten thirty on the East Coast, and believe it or not, it's from six a.m. to seven thirty on Pacific. So DVR it. Oh. And because of all the things that happened this week, the, the show got blown up. And it's it's going to be very heavily on serious political uh, pieces about the divide and everything that's going on. The one entertainment piece, which will probably run at about 10 a.m. on the East Coast and uh, 7 a.m. on the West Coast, is going to be, they gave me like nine minutes to do um, a movie about my father-in-law, Norman Lear. What happened was we went out there, Kate and I, my wife, uh, in November, and we quarantined for two weeks so that we could come inside his pod for two weeks and just hug him up because, you know, he was aching for, for hugs from his loved ones. So we hugged him up for two weeks. And while I was there, I made a home movie and we put it all together. I did it with, you know, iPhones and I had a few cameras out there and I set it up myself. Um, you know, it was too dangerous to have any crews come in uh, because he's 98 and, and COVID was, LA was on fire with COVID. Right. So right. you'll see it tomorrow. And this is a little clip from it. All right, let's play it. So the pandemic comes along and that does what to your life? Well, the first thing it does is, is uh, imprison me. Uh, basically, that's the way I feel. I can't leave the house or I'm uh, advised not to leave. The house. And I don't. I listen. So I wake up in this beautiful home. I'm ashamed of everything I just said. Because <laughs> right. I wake up in this beautiful home married to this lovely woman. And what the hell am I complaining about? But I am in prison at the same time, yeah. and I hate it. I want it all. I'm not going to go to the office. I have the hunger to see the people I work with. I mean, there's no business like show business. Like no business I know. Everything Think about, about it is appealing. appealing. Everything, Everything the, the traffic, traffic will allow. <laughs> Well, as Dr. LaPook said, he's cut off when, the, when every time he's a clip. There he is. Well, you, you know what it looks like. We got to see it. Yeah, um, I, I must. You know, there's a little technical thing tonight, as you probably know. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I had to come in through YouTube. So, so Norman Lear, that's, that's fun, right? Norman, yes. wait, Norman Lear is how old? Ninety-eight and a half. He's you know, when you're four years old, and somebody says, "How old are you?" You say 
four, the four and a quarter, four and a half, you know, four and three quarters. And then you don't do that for another like 80 years. When my father got to be 90 and they asked him how old he was, 90 and a quarter, 90 and a half. Yeah, he was proud of, he wanted every credit for every part of yes. the year. So Norman is 90 and a half. Uh. And you can't believe, I mean, he is absolutely ticking. He's on it. He's amazing. He got six shows that are in various stages. And by the way, a ponytail? Was that a ponytail? Uh, yeah, yes. He he thought it was cool. And uh, Kate put it in a ponytail. And we needed to show the scene where she's making it so people wouldn't say, like, what the heck is that yeah. behind him? <laughs> so, anyway, really good stuff. He talks about – you're going to see stuff you have never seen before. Because I, I have – I'm inside his screening room it, videoing him oh, wow. in his kitchen – uh, in his study, which you can't believe his study, how gorgeous it is. It, 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 he likes to smoke an occasional cigar, so his wife, Lynn, designed it to look like the inside of a cigar box. It's <laughs> mahogany. It's gorgeous. And you'll see the, the Emmys, the million Emmys, and the books and the pictures. And it's, it's a part that, you know, he's had all sorts of things done on him, including a movie on, of his life on American Masters. You, you've never seen anything like this because it's really intimate. And actually... You know, this is so personal for me. I don't lead. I'm very proud of the fact that Norman Lee is my father-in-law, but I don't lead with it, as you know. Right. When I first met you, I didn't say, "Oh, hi." You know, by the way, my my father-in-law. No. no. Yeah. Um, by the way, everyone, we when we met we met John when he did uh, the night before what the world needs now is love came out, and we and and he did a piece on what the world needs now on CBS Evening News, and I guess we met a few days before that. It had to have been like that Friday or Saturday because we just done the song a couple of days earlier. And we go in there, we go to his apartment, and, and, we, and we're at the piano, and Seth plays a little bit, and we talk, and we literally see a picture of Norman Lear there. And I forget what we said, Seth, but it was sort I was of like, like... Oh, I met him once. How did you ever meet him? Right, because Norman had come to disaster on Broadway, I like, show. just a couple of months earlier. And <laughs> Seth was like, how do you know him? <laughs> and by the way, our viewer just said... For as long as I've seen the doctor on TV, how had I never heard Norman <laughs> Lear go. is yeah. his father-in-law? We're, we're proving your point, John LaPook. <laughs> yeah, well, and then you remember we FaceTimed him, and you were uh, you were you guys were FaceTimed with Norman. Are you but kidding? Yes. It was one of the most exciting moments of our lives. We're obsessed with him. He's the greatest, and you know, so I it's been very personal, and I've been protective of film like this. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know what? This is the moment. This we is need a feel-good piece like good, this. Nice feel-good. You're gonna feel so good looking. at and you're going to hear some things you've never heard from him before and some pieces of wisdom that are really things to hold on to. He's oh, and a half. can't wait. All right. All thanks, right. John. Thank thanks you, for... John. CBS This Morning. Peace out. CBS, no, Sunday, morning. CBS Sunday morning. CBS Sunday morning. CBS yeah. Sunday morning. All right, literals. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Oh, my God. We both got you at the same I time. I know. <laughs> God, some OCD well, CBS happening. Sun CBS This Morning is Monday through Friday. CBS Sunday morning is Sunday morning. Oh, you, all right. I'm it's a different name. Um, all right, Effies, get ready to go a blast from the past. Please welcome back. We have fabulous Yvette. Hi, Yvette. Hi. We, we have Fuchsia with an exclamation point, the way it should be. <laughs> we have Keisha Lewis. Hi, hey, hey. Hi. We have Roz or Ryan. Hi. We have. He's there, very sexy. We have Sharon Catherine Curtis. We have Sharon Catherine Brown. We have Miss Julia McGirt Nixon. Yeah. Hi, Julia. Hi. And Lilius is slowly planting it. I, I can see you, Lilius. <laughs> Come up to the screen. One, two, three. Lilius. Okay. Oh, and hold on, Seth. And I'm, I'm we got some that, donations. I'm hoping that that Lilius has her cell phone. Do you have your cell phone, Lilius? I think she's on her cell phone, honey. Oh, you're on your cell phone. Oh, uh, can sure. you read it? Oh, good. I sent you a couple of donations. What is that I just forwarded them to you. I don't know. Maybe. Lilius, unmute yourself to read the donations. Wait, Lilius, A, unmute yourself. B, who is grinding their teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Oh, Lilius, uh, just. Unmute. I think Louis is. Oh, yeah. Louis, unmute. Unmute, oh, lady. Unmute. Next, lady. Unmute it. We can't hear you. I thought David would unmute. No. We, we, if you unmute, if you mute there yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Oh, this I know. Shit. Uh, Are you going to turn this off? No. Read Read the donations. Oh, okay. 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 Randy. 
Slovacek. Oh, Slovacek. Huh? Slovacek. 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 You know. Okay. Randy has donated $50 in honor of the fabulous Effies who taught a little blonde boy from Texas what acting could be. <laughs> Shout out to my Chicago co-star, Roz Ryan. Yay! Yes, Randy yeah. from Chicago. Yeah. The one from Jocelyn, who's donated thirty dollars. I am a Dream Girls fanatic. I remember seeing it on Broadway when I was a child. I remember the exact seat I was in. Dream Girls is life. Thank you, stars in the house. Aww. He's right about that, honey. Dream Girls was life. It was, it was life. life. Can I tell y'all something funny about Roz Ryan? Yeah. What? Go keep. I failed to mention when I got hired, I was hired to understudy Roz. But Roz was also newly married that year, so I got to go on a lot. And I don't know whether it was after Roz came back from one of the times that I had been on and we were having a conversation and I don't even remember the context of it, but she looked me deep in my eyes and she said, baby, don't try to sing like me or drink like me. Because you hurt yourself. <laughs> you do you. Okay. That's not like something I would say. Woo. I was like, yes, ma'am. She said, don't Yvette, do it. Yvette. Yvette. Um, I just, to that, I, I just want to speak to that because one of the things, well, first, I'm going to go back just a minute. I also went in auditioning for Laurel. I just knew that was going to be me because like Lilius, I, at that time, I was a size six. I was snatched. So I just want, I actually went in with the red dress, the heels, everything. And that day that I came in the last audition and said to them, you know, what do you want to hear? That's when he must have decided, yeah, oh. she definitely don't know. And I, they put a fat suit on me, which I took off in the second act. Yeah, it was, it was bananas, but it was great because it looked like I've been to Weight Watchers and it was magic. <laughs> <laughs> If only we could do that right now. I know. <laughs> I would take off that this COVID authority, honey. Yes, and take that off this V, because me and COVID are just, we become good <laughs> buddies. Uh, <laughs> but I'm um, in that suit, too. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was what we did, because I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how I was, because I was looking at Jennifer, and not only looking at her, but I was also concerned about, I don't sound like that. Like, I have a big voice, but I don't sound like that. So my thing was, this is what you're gonna get. And there was actually, it was a, it was a running joke, but it was a compliment. I don't know if you remember this, Fuchsia, because you know you were, we were in the, the chorus together. But um, they had called me Nancy Wilson. Um, I call you Nancy Wilson. <laughs> and at first I was like, really? But then she's like one of my favorite singers. She is my. So, you know, my way of doing it, and I think that's what it was. Like, I didn't sound like anybody else. I don't think any of us did, but I knew I didn't. And so I, I had my own thing on it, and they appreciated that. Michael, both Michaels appreciated that, and they allowed me to do it. Um, of course, I also was like, I hope y'all got some of the keys up in here. <laughs> I'm not going to be singing that note. Um, yeah, but they, they figured it out and they did allow me to be that. And it was amazing. I, had I think that was the brilliance of Michael Bennett because yeah. as yep. I look at all of us, none of us sounded like Holiday, right? Nope, right? But we all no. brought something to the table that hmm. he saw. That he saw, yeah. The one comment that I heard from him, he saw me go on once. And the one thing he said to me, cause I don't riff, I just stand flat footed and holler. That's what I do. So. He said, you are an actress, Keisha. Don't ever forget that piece of it. I don't care what you sing, where you sing it. You are an actress. And you always bring that to the table. So he saw that. He was brilliant. We didn't yeah. all have to be like Holiday. Right, you know, right. Don't. But when you're young and you don't know and you're looking at, you're going, ooh, you know, how yeah, is it? Sure. But I was so blessed because I had so many people holding me. Arnisha Walker, who was... Ah! Uh, Laurel, Laurel yeah. Yeah. Uh, she literally, I mean, the first night I went on, she moved me to some of my places because I was like, I was so nervous. Yeah. Um, so I'm grateful for that, you know, the cast that we mm -hmm. had. I know if I start mentioning, we'll just all start crying, but we were just 
around it. And I didn't even know that this was the beginning of a huge community where I was, these ladies here, I was going to be working with them again. And we'd see each other again, Ross Ryan, Sharon, Lilius would come out with the cabarets. I mean, it has been the beginning of such a beautiful family and village. Hey, Ben, I want to say two things. You know, we had Donna McKechnie on last night talking about playing oh. Cassie. Mm -hmm. And she was saying that Michael let people make every dance their own. And that's what I love. And I have, a, I would literally, the one clip I chose of you, Yvette, is this riff that I've never heard. Not even a riff. This amazing melody change I'd never heard before. It was so shocking to me. So I'm going to play it when you go, I'll change my life. Um, I'll make a vow. Okay. It is so shocking. So I, I'm obsessed. Okay. Listen, the, the no change you do is so beautiful. Here we go. Sorry. It's right before. Wait, I am changing. I am changing. I guess I know why. Um, I'm going to start again. I'm going to leave my past behind. You don't do that. I'm behind. It is so beautiful. Listen to this. Everybody heard it but me. I didn't even hear it. Whatever. Oh, it out. Sometimes clips don't play. Oh, it's so good. Oh, my oh, God. Yvette, you'll watch it. Sounds great. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. You got going on. Wow. You know what? Come on. Before, before, come before on. we go on a little bit, is there anyone here, uh, because this is for the Actors Fund, anyone who has a personal connection to the Actors Fund? Maybe with Actors Fund was there to help you at some point in your life? Or someone. Oh, Sharon Brown. Wait a minute. Sharon Keisha. Yeah. And Lilius, Sharon, oh, yeah. go, you go first. And Fuchsia. Oh, yeah, yeah I, 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 that's the reason why I'm, you can hear me, right? Yeah. That's the reason why people, we don't, in the, we don't even blink an eye in the in community because the Actors Fund is so amazing. And uh, they helped me pay my rent uh, when, you know, it was. It wasn't just like, hey, pay my rent. It was like, you're getting ready to be out of here, like now. And um, not just the thing that I want to say the, the most about the Actors Fund is when you're in that position, you don't feel very good. And everyone goes out of their way to lift you up, to give you your dignity. Because it's a, it's a, when you get when you have to get to that point to ask for that kind of help, it's you know you you feel very low and um, I we are very much women who like to handle things on our on our own and you know stand on our own two feet. So it's difficult to go. Oh wow, I just really need help, and they never made me feel low they you don't you don't blink an eye you don't take a breath somebody says the actor's fun and all you say is what do you need where do you need me sharon i first off i love that story but secondly was that before or after dream girls that was after dream girls you know that and i yeah. and i asked and i and i asked that i i kind of had a feeling that was the case but i mean people if they had seen you in as effie and dream girls they would think, oh she's got it made but it's like you're that's the business this, this is how many actors actually don't ever need help again after they've starred in a broadway show even it's like most people do and i and i i do want to like add to that um because you said was it was it after dream girls or before dream girls i was living with my parents but you know i was, like, <laughs> was, you know, I was that age but um what dream girls did for I, I think I'm not overstepping my bounds to speak for all of us. Broadway has always been the great white way. Like they call it the great white way, but Broadway has always been very white. And what Dream Girls did was show glamour and, and fast pace and shiny and bright and drama and 
brilliance, it made you go, I have a place here that's big, not this is the little black show on the on the side. We have a place that's big and beautiful. And that's why everybody wears dream girls like a badge of honor, male and female, because to it was a tough show to get into. It was a tough circle of people to be accepted by. And it is a badge of honor because that that was that showed so many possibilities. You know, it's almost like how everybody black felt when we finally had a, a black president. You know, it was that to go, this show isn't just big for us. This show is big, the world loves dream girls. And that meant the world to us. You know, I just wanted to to say that like it, it made it made Broadway more than accessible for us. Uh, uh, and and of- it was a tough show to do. Ooh. You know, it was no joke to do eight, oh, eight no. times a week. It was not a joke. Yeah, I mean, theater, theater. Anyhow, you know, you don't have weekends, and so <laughs> you don't have a life. You don't have a life. No, right. you don't have a life. Right. 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 In no. the theater, That's all you, you can do is lay down. When it's yeah. take a nap, lay take down, be quiet. quiet, be quiet. I, I actually lost my quiet. voice. I lost my voice. Um, we were in Connecticut. It scared you. Anytime a singer loses their voice, anytime you even just start, it is the most frightening thing because you don't know if it'll come back. And it does. But this was actually, I did not speak. And the doctor told me, he says, you are using, it's like a muscle. You have broken it all the way down because you've never sung this much consistently when I went on, just going. And, and just sing like that. Because Effie, you, like you, that. you can't just like coast through that. Effie. You cannot coast through F. You can't say, oh, I'm telling you. Oh, I'm not <laughs> you. No, you gotta, you gotta dig up in there. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not just vocal, but that's bone. There's emotions behind it. it. Yeah, that is even more of a challenge. Yeah. Because right. I passed so right out to the floor backstage after the first act one night. Mm. And I had been doing my eight shows a week. And I was sharing the room with Terry Burrell. Oh, and Terry Burrell yeah. said, don't let this show kill you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I went to, do y'all remember Dr. Grabsheed? Yes. Oh, I went to him. No red wine. He was and a giving you, giving yeah. you all red wine. wine. No, no cheese. red wine. <laughs> no cheese. But you know no what? Green, no girls, green Girls got me. I, I was able from that show. I can sing, I mean, for me or any other show. When I was back, mm-hmm. when I did the show here in LA, Sisterella, where I had to sing, I was I was great because yep. that, that was like the training ground. And I feel like um Dream Girls was the Hamilton of our day. Like that yes. was the Hamilton. But we were like cooking it, cooking it, cooking it, you know. Yes. You, couldn't, yes. you couldn't stay out late. You could not stay out late. You just well, we you couldn't yeah. even go out. You couldn't go out in between shows. You had to sleep. No, you did. Well, we, really I could never sleep. I, my, I would be. I, I could never sleep between shows. I didn't know how y'all did that. I was like, oh my god. Because if I wake back up, my place would be in the basement. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I can't do that either. No, I marvel at people who can do that between shows. I can't do it. If I go no, to sleep, no. it's because I'm sick. But you and still got to sleep. Oh, I got to take a shower all over again. Exactly. Walk up all over again. Yeah. You so, still got to lay down. Lady, I, love your, I love your reaction to this, ladies. The role of Christine Daae on Broadway, yeah, the see. entire the entire title song um, is lip synced, and yeah. she takes off two matinees a week. Yeah. Take that in. Yeah. What? I know that. What? I know several Christine. So I, I, I got nothing for that. That's my response. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just like. I'm I got nothing. Like, yeah, I'm gonna have to let I that go. What, what's the thing is, is, is that they didn't the do it little, like yes. we did it. They can't oh, do it right now. That's what they're doing. Oh yes, yeah, ma'am. the kids they can't do it like we did. It. And they Sharon. get paid for that. Except, <laughs> I, will, I will say, except I will say because I I also worked with Andrew Lord, Sir Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. That's in the contract. That's not a, um, they're, they got the very high note and all that. Like some of that stuff there, uh, Sir Andrew is like, no, this is just going to be, 
Yeah, it's not their choice. Yeah, but I'm not, just it's saying not the actress's fault. It's course. not at all. But yeah, I'm just yeah. saying that's yeah. the contract. Whereas that's Effie, what I always remind people is Effie sings, and I'm telling you, and then. 10 years later, sings I am changing, but it's really 20 <laughs> minutes later. She literally has to <laughs> All right. Crazy. Right. And right. by the way, Sharon Brown, Sharon Brown, as far as I know, you're the only one who kept in Jennifer's crazy key because that shit yeah. was high. Yeah. Just, yeah. Sharon, was listen, high. To, listen to how high this shit is. Sharon, you're the only one I think that kept it because it's really? super crazy. And may I say, she did that eight times a week without fail. Mm -hmm. may I, I can't. Say, when yeah. I was 18, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to add to look, um, Lilius, when she said um, she uh, she went, she was on standby or whatever for um, Jennifer. Well, yeah. Robert Clayton did a, uh, a tour, five-week tour with um, Jennifer, and I did her matinees. For her and um one of the most scariest well watching her in the wings every night i must say i was just i was just amazed i was like is that really coming out of a person every night and and then it was something different every night nothing it, it, might, it might have been the smallest thing but she was just amazing to me but her mom was was um transitioning um to the um she was she was dying at the time nice. and so she had to it was amazing to watch she had to do a show fly out come back, do the show, because she kept going back and forth to see her mom. But one day she came to me and she said, Fuchsia, is it okay if you do the evening show tonight and not do the matinee? And I just looked at her like, what, what am I saying, no? And um, and I was like, sure, but I wasn't thinking about the title, her name above the title kind of thing. And Milton Craig nearly laughed at me that night. He said, hey, girl. Baby girl, <laughs> you gonna be all right because they had to go out there and tell everybody that Jennifer Holiday wasn't in the house. Yikes! And uh, and I was nervous only because Milton kept teasing me. And um, it was um it was in um uh, what is it um St. Louis St. Louis that has the out the outdoor seven thousand feet house, and it was full. And um and I was a nervous wreck. But thank God I got through it. Uh, I went out there and no one left and no one <laughs> put their money back because the promoter was talking about me like he knew me. He was making up stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> but um, no one, you know, I, I, I won their hearts, thank God, after move. And um, my heart got back into its right place <laughs> after that. But it was it was a, it was nerve wracking, like you said, to have somebody's name above the title. And yeah, they're yeah. not and that's who they came to see. And she was not like an unknown person. So that was most, that was like a very scary moment for me in my career. Um, I was Nell Carter standby. Mm. Oh. And when they announced that the role usually played by Nell Carter will be played by Keisha Lewis, there were audible groans. Yeah. There were people walking out. Yeah. And that's they pulled the curtain. That's a horrible feeling, yeah. It's a horrible feeling. It is yeah. also, it was a turning point for me. That was the last show that I was a cover for or stood by or understudied. I said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. I want to, Julia, I want to get you before because your Wi Fi is weird. So, Julia, I want to talk to you before your Wi Fi cuts out. I found this great. So, you were, you took over right yeah. after Jennifer. You were the first. I found this great clip of you because everyone keeps talking about making things different. No, I actually <laughs> took over after Vanessa. After Vanessa? Hold on, she's delayed. Yeah. Where's Vanessa, Vanessa? took over after Jennifer, and I was her understudy. And then after she left, then I took over. Okay, by the way, everyone, yeah, everyone should be muting when other people are talking because there's definitely some crackling and some delays. So, can Julie, you, you, I can hear you now. I can't I found, I found this beautiful clip that Stephen Nakami sent of you doing I Am Changing, yet again, with something I've never heard before. Everyone adds their own something, and this is, you're so amazing on this transition. I'm obsessed with what you added to it. Listen to this. I need a hand. 
Favorite song to sing. I yes. love that song. Yes, Julia. That was the most fun. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, this is so a great song to set up. And if people wow. don't know, um, I have um, I, I want to go back to the beginning of the show with with Move because Move is one of my favorite songs for me. Yes. That's that's the thing too. By the way, look at the dancing. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget it. There's no dancing for it. Alphaba has no dancing in Wicked. Like this is literally a singing, dancing, acting role. You have to do Absolutely. all three. Absolutely. And we have to hit it. We have to hit it. Because, you know, when you did step into the bad side, you Woo! had to hit me early and the guys with the with the instruments and they were doing this. So you had to know where you were going and hit those bars. And then no so heel. And then no the heel. Yes. And we're not even talking about the quick changes. I'm oh, talking about quick changes. Come on, quick changes. The Mylar change was my favorite. The Mylar. I would and, and can we talk about the double? Mouth. Yes, and the my triple lashes. 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 The triple lashes. Come yeah, on. I found, I found, I found a photograph. Da, 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 yeah, people don't know. Basically, the dreams are performing and they have a big fight. And as they're having the fight, this curtain comes down and then they're in another city and it's around 10 seconds later and they come through the Mylar curtain in a completely different costume. It's one of the most amazing theater magic moments where the audience would scream. But as soon as that Mylar curtain came down, you had to do it. How long was that quick change? You know what? What did you have? 10 seconds? How long was it? Not 10 seconds. It wasn't 10 seconds. It didn't feel like 10 seconds. It was not 10 seconds. It was probably It was more like three seconds. Yeah. It was fast. Yeah. That's Barbara and Theoni Aldridge, baby. Huh? Barbara Matera and Theoni Aldridge. Yeah, I worked that. Yes, they work. And what I love about Barbara Matera and, and the, particularly Theoni Aldridge, mm. they, they, Theoni made the, the FB costumes fit the FB body. That Individually. Yes, yes. You know, yes. She, you know I, I, I looked different from Jennifer, so she made my, uh, that uh, I'm changing costume. Not the changing, the, uh, the, the, the finale costume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She made it differently right. for me because it, I looked different. I was shaped differently. So I, I love that they did that. And, yeah, I actually um, have that, Louis. I, I have love a, the costumes. Huh? Yeah, the costumes I have you doing it. the finale. Uh, this is you in the finale costume. Hold on. Let me look for Lilius finale. I literally just got that clip. Lilius one night. Hold on. Wait, Roz, I'm changing. It's all over seven years. Hold on. Sharon, where does tour? Oh, this. Um, right. Is, let me just make sure this is right. Hold on. Is this it? No. Hold on. I want to show everybody the it's damn clips. It's hard costume. when there are this many clips. I have so many damn clips. My wow. head is coming off. They're, they're, no, no. Wait, no, I want to see all of them. Uh, oh, here it is. It's this. <laughs> <laughs> this is, if people, this is kind of skipping to the end, but basically, you know, Effie's kicked out of the group, and then there's this beautiful moment where they realize basically it was no one's fault except for Curtis. He was this, this Machiavellian devil, and finally all the women get back together at the end. It's this beautiful reconnection of the women, and they bring Effie finally to the forefront, which she should have damn been the whole damn show. And it's this beautiful moment. And here's the costume you were talking about, Lilius. Effie, Every man has his own special dream. And your dream's just about to come true.
I'm going to save it for the end of the show. (laughs) That is so beautiful, Lillian. Gorgeous. Wow. Now, who was that? Linda Leilani. That was Linda Linda Leilani. Leilani. That was Linda Leilani. That was Debbie Burrell and Arnisha, I think. Debbie Burrell and Linda Leilani. Oh, that was Lucinda? Oh, okay. That was beautiful. No, no, that was that Debbie. Was Debbie Burrell? Oh, okay. Okay. So moving. So let me go back to move for a second. I want to my move, which is the first time that the dreams appear. They're at a talent contest. And I remember seeing certain productions of Dream Girls where everybody looks so fierce. And what I love about Michael Bennett and Michael Peters is these are three girls that rehearse in their basement and they're supposed to be totally clunky. And Sharon, this clip of you oh, doing no. It is so <laughs> hilarious. I'm so scared. Right now. understand the clunkiness. I'm so excited. Oh my god! <laughs> it is the most awkward and hilarious. Was, dance. This is a shocking moment for me. <laughs> uh, well, let me before I show. Was that your subtext? Really? I mean, it's so crazy awkward. It's hilarious. My, my you, you have to. Funny, funny thing. I, I love what Keisha said. I think Dream Girls gave me the reputation as a as a singer. I mean, I, I I'm a singer, but I'm an actress first. I always will be. I always have been, and so I I never approached it from okay. This is this song. It's this song. I had to every single night just really go through her journey of you know she doesn't know anything. She's all attitude, you know, and, and she's got lots of walls up and. So she's not as refined as Dina and as nice and as, you know, warm. And she's just, oh, Lord, I've set this up. Watch this. I mean, these are, this is a girl rehearsing in her basement and really giving it her all. Here we go. Yeah, I think oh, those yeah. Pink, they 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 in those pink when they hit that bam. Oh yeah, <laughs> steps in that pink. Oh. Yes. Oh hey, my God. Seth, before you go to your next clip, I, I, there were a couple of you that had Actors Fun stories, right? Because we are here for the Actors Fun. Yes. Of course, you donate at starsinthehouse.com or text Fun 2020 to 56512 and forward your receipt to donations at Stars in the House. Um, but Lilius, Keisha, who else? Who wants yeah, to go next? Several Lilius. years ago, um, I broke my ankle mm. really badly. I was uh, on a gig in Fire Island. It also happened to be my birthday. And and uh, I had a rehearsal with my musical director, and it was a beautiful day. I had a brand new bathing suit. I said, let's go to the beach. So we went to the beach. Anyway, I, the wave a wave hit me. Another wave hit me, shattered my ankle. And I still did the gig the next day, believe it or not, in the wheelchair. But I had gigs lined up back to back during that time. And so all of my money was wiped out and I didn't know what to do. Um, and I, I, had, I went to the Actors Fund and the Actors Fund, without any hesitation, was able to help me pay all of my bills, um, able to, to give me some cash so I could get back and forth to the doctor um, when I needed to. Um, and I, because for about eight weeks, I could not even stand up to put any, I couldn't put any weight on it. I had to have operation. It was so Actors Fund made sure that I had rent paid, the mm. phone, light paid, and food in the house. Um, without any hesitation and, and with so much love and devotion. And you know, I, I was used to working. I was used to working and taking care of my kids on my own and getting everything done on my own. You know, I'm I'm the strong woman, I could do it. But that 
stopped me. That broken ankle stopped me completely. The actor's fun. Pick me up and say, here you go. Sit down, get healed. You won't starve and you won't get put out. And I would never forget that. And that's why whenever they call me for anything, I'll say, okay, what time? When you want me to be there? Where are we going? What are we doing? Because they saved my butt. They literally saved my butt. And so I'm, I'm forever grateful to the Actors Fund and, uh, and the people that work there. And the people that work there, I don't know where they find these kind of people who are able to sit you down and make you feel completely confident and completely at ease and completely taken care of. So I'll just say, Lilith, you say yes out of the Actors Fund, but Miss Thing, you've been doing Actors Fund benefits for years and years, so it's not just because they helped you recently. You've always said yes to every single benefit. I just want to make sure people know that about you. Yeah, I say yes, because we have a lot of fun with the Actors Fund. Yeah. That funny girl was the bomb. The Dream <laughs> Girls, we, we, rose, we made over a million dollars for the Actors Fund with the Dream Girls. And I think I broke my foot, my toe, or something in rehearsal for that show. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stop, girl. Um, <laughs> Keisha, you were um, you were nodding uh, also, but you have a story, an actress fun story. Hold on, oh, hold on, hold on, you're muted. But the glasses are fierce. The glasses. Are glasses. There you go. The glasses. Um, you sent me something, so I guess you're gonna want me to read it in a minute, right? Yes. So, um, so my story is that I did uh, this Broadway show called Leap of Faith and Leap of Faith opened and closed mm -hmm. within a week and I was gagging. I was also uh, newly divorced and a single mother. Um, and there I had nothing lined up because Leap of Faith was supposed to run. Yeah. And uh, we literally went from, I had, before Leap of Faith, I had a long period of not working so I was kind of, you know, scrapping along. Then Leap of Faith, that kind of helped me catch up a little bit, but I wasn't all the way caught up. And then when Leap of Faith closed, you know, it was devastating. And my son was in private school at the time. And I went to the Actors Fund and said, I need help with my mortgage. I need help with my son's tuition. I need uh, to have some grocery money, you know, cause yeah. I don't know where the next gig is coming from. And I was counting on this one to run. Yeah. And when I tell you how kind they were, because I don't remember who, I think it was Sharon who said, how low you feel. Yeah. You know, you feel, I did. I know, I can't speak yeah. for anybody else. I felt, I didn't feel bad about myself because I knew it wasn't my fault, but I felt bad about the situation that I was in and I felt bad about the situation I had put my son in. Yes. And to know that you know, there were people that I could go to who were kind and not judgy and not weird and yeah. give you that look like, why didn't you save your money? You know, that whole idea. <laughs> yeah. You do hear that from your peers yeah. and constituents. Yeah. And I didn't have it, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful. Wow, these stories are so consistent. I just, I love it. I love hearing this about the Actors Fund. I love you, Keisha. <laughs> I just love you so much. I love you, Pookie Pie. <laughs> I love you right back. First of all, my grandmother, oh my gosh, um, used to call me that and that you, I'm getting ready to cry my eyeballs out. <laughs> no one has ever said that. That's amazing. I just have to tell you that. Wow, this is weird. We weren't expecting this. <laughs> that, uh, I love you all the more. Mimi. That's, that's your love. My you. grandmother, Mimi. Wow. That's you. Keisha, will you read the donation we just got? Sure. This is Debbie from Toronto gave us one hundred dollars, and I am telling you, stars in the house has been the best part of my day since day one in March. I was a box office attendant in Canada when everything shut down, and your show has soothed my soul and quieted my mind ever since. I'm finally able to donate tonight, and what a night to do it! A oh. night of effies. Girl, please. Oh, and I am telling you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Nice. Keisha, you got the job. Best line readings yes. of the night. That's beautiful. I'm an actress, darling. Yes, you are. <laughs> you got the best of it. <laughs> and okay, so I, you, you, you didn't hear me the first time. I'm, I was yeah. I'm an actress, darling. You know, speaking of Keisha, I just want to show this. You know, it's funny because 
there's so many Effies, like a long line of Effies, but you also started a trend. There's so many long lines of Asaka. Our, oh, our, our dog, dog is acting up. Let me get her some broccoli. Yeah, I got broccoli downstairs for her. Broccoli for the dog. Broccoli, you yeah. know, vegetarian dog? <laughs> well, if we give her real food, she's, she's already overweight, according to our vets. So we're trying to give her healthy food. Aww. Oh, she's so cute. I just saw her. She's my angel. Mine is right right now. I love my angel. Anyway, my point is though, Keisha, you set the stage. The Os the Osaka in Once on This Island, so many women follow in your footsteps, including Lilius and Fuchsia right here. This is Keisha. And by the way, all the talk about, oh, it's so unfair. We had to hit all these high notes. You started with the high E and the G sharp at the end of Once on This Island. You set that. That was your key. So rude. Here we go. Listen to this. <laughs> Great show. Okay, I can't even think that. No. Twenty-five, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Twenty-five. I couldn't even think that note, baby. Yeah, I, I wasn't in that note was never in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any more, baby. Come here. That was it. G sharp, people. A G yes, sharp. Yes. Wow. Y'all can have those. Yeah. I found this clip of, you know, my favorite part of Jim Goes is, of course, the big fight scene. And I did this benefit of the Gay Lesbian Synagogue. And Fusion, you were there on my first show. We had two shows in that night. And you do such an amazing thing. And, and I'm telling you, it's so hilarious because you don't sing the word me. You just do this amazing vocalese. And Lilius, I think you're in the audience because you start laughing. But Fusion, it's an amazing moment. Watch this. I don't think you've ever seen this. Oh, my God. You're going to love it. It's amazing. <laughs> Don't tell mamas. Don't tell mamas. 1997 was a fundraiser for the lesbian synagogue. Wow. I don't that's even right. remember that. That was back. Wow. I think I was there. And it was uh, organic. That was organic. And, and that, 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 that was me. I was um I was doing every one night and I was I, I came in with you know um not full vocals and uh when it came to end I'm telling you oh my god I was like I was dreading that song from the beginning of the show and I I knew there was no voice left and I knew I had I wanted a life after Effie <laughs> so I went, I found that actress deep down in there and I pulled her out and I just cried. I just cried. I just cried. I just cried. <laughs> it's so sympathetic. I don't even know if I even finished the song fully, but I had a lot of moments where the music just went and I the song by the time it was at the end. Oh my God. I cried on the audience. I was like, I got to cry right now because oh. <laughs> I can't oh. cry. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> what the about, all the things about Effie. There's a there's a lot of crying uh, right. for Effie the in the work. show. Yeah. Um, right before family, that sound that scene right before family, mm. you know, where um she finds Effie finds out that she's not gonna be the lead. Mm -hmm. And the what about what I need? Yeah, what about what's right. right for me? 
And I used to cry right there mm -hmm. and pray that the crying effect would leave by the time it was time for us. Yeah, because you right. can't sing right. yeah, right. it, was, it was hard to, hard. to get that. Which, once yeah. you, something yeah. happens when you cry. It closes your throat. Yeah, so, you know, I would always pray that I would, okay, get over that and, you know, be able to sing. Because I'm telling you, it's a beast. Yeah. 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 That's the beast. It is a beast. Yeah. And like I said before, you can't just skip and jump through it. You gotta, you gotta dig down, and yeah. pull that out. You now, can't that mark it. Me, I like that part because it was like a moment to breathe. You didn't have to sing, you no know, A's and B's and C's and C's and F and G's. I was like, oh Lord, what about how I feel right now? I feel real good right now. <laughs> it was like one of those moments where you didn't have to yeah. take a really, really deep, deep breath. Listen, I did, a, I did a Dream Girls with um, Robert Clater directed in LA. Mm -hmm. And Robert Clater, bless his soul. I think he's watching right now. Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Robert. He had a, um, uh, a book of, you know, things that Michael had said because he was a part of that first tour, I believe, that Michael did. And he was assisting and choreographing and doing all that. Mm -hmm. So he sat us down, this company in LA, um, and talked about the story of the relationships with the dreams, right? And he talked about something I had never heard before, which was that Effie and Dina were besties. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. the, and I hadn't heard that before. No, yeah. Um, so because they were besties, it was all the more hurtful when she went with mm -hmm. Curtis. Yep. So the crying moment for me, because I'm an only child and friends are sisters for me. Right. Yeah. So it was when Effie and Dina, I get choked up thinking about it, when Effie and Dina find each other again in that second act. Oh, oh God. God. That's what that, was, that would take me down. I could not hardly sing it. Hey, Raj Ryan, you know, by the way, we, we you got a shout out in the comments and normally they get sent to us, but look at this. Hey, Ross Ryan, love you, Keisha Lewis. Just donated 250 bucks from oh, me and Tony. Actors find such a blessing as many some guy Whitlock. So thank you, Ross and Keish. Thank, thank you, guy Whitlock. Thank you, Tony. And Tony. Oh, wow. 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 That's good, thank good, you. good. We like that. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Here's another one from Susan. Just sent a $250 donation. Loved hearing these stories about the Actors Fund impact and these wonderfully talented women. You guys bring so much joy during such troubling times. Thank you for the constant light you shine to all of us. Thank, Thank you, Susan. It's bringing joy to us, too. I we love that. We need to see these yeah. beautiful ladies. And there's one more thing for Fuchsia after um, You're Gonna Love Me with Your Closed Mouth. Adrian Bailey wants to know, how did it taste? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes good, didn't it? Adrian, Adrian, always. Adrian, if you ever want to get videos, um, yeah, that are crazy, funny, and censored, that would be Adrian. Be Adrian's friend. Adrian is the one. I love Adrian. I love you, Adrian. Yes, Julia. Julia wants to speak. Yeah. Guys, I apologize. I dropped my phone the other day, and this thing is driving me nuts, though. But anyway, I had an incredible, incredible time doing that show, and, and I really and truly just, I remember Roz, I remember Jennifer in the wings, I remember we're seeing Lilius coming from the Chicago company, and I had a blast with it. But everybody was talking about Michael needing to see your attitude. And it was like, I think I had that attitude because I remember he asked me to go to L.A. And I was like, I'm not going to L.A. I just want to do See? New York. See? <laughs> he said, oh, OK, well, then we'll put you in New York. You what? know, and um, I just I just loved every moment of it. It was a wonderful roller coaster ride. I don't know what my phone is, is going to do after this. So I just really <laughs> wanted to say that and just say I'm very proud to be a part of this. It was the most talented bunch of ladies that played Effie ever. And Michael made mints no words about it. He always said, it takes a very special work person to play that role. And I feel honored mm -hmm. to be one of those ladies that played that role. So 
My phone is going in and out. I had to say that. If it goes out again, guys, I don't know. But no, we, we hear you. And I just want to say to you, Perfect timing. Julia. Look at that. She left. Ah, she Can dropped she hear out. Me? Oh, no, she because dropped out. She'll, she'll watch she might it be able to hear you, though, She might still yeah. be able to hear you. Okay, so I, I, um, a friend of mine went to see Dream Girls on Broadway, and she saw you. Julia. Julia. And she thought that you was me. And she got so mad at me. She said, why didn't you tell me you were in Dream Girls on Broadway? I said, I'm not on Dream Girls on Broadway. I'm, I'm, I was somewhere else. And so... I wanted to, after that, I really want to meet you and know who you were. And I saw you at Mr. B's in Washington, D.C. Uh, Mr. Henry's. Mr. Henry's. And when I walked in there, they had a wall size poster yeah. of Julia. And I looked, and I looked, and I said, yeah, this is family right here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because my friend confused us, you know, seeing see you in the show, she thought you you were me. But I love you. I miss seeing you. How, sister? I know. There's, re there's relation going on there, girl. It's in the There's eyes. a what? <laughs> yes. Uh, I have no idea. There's relation going on there, girl. It's in the eyes. eyes. <laughs> yes. By the way, look how great Julia looked. That, oh, See, that costume. Fierce. Beautiful. Right. Beautiful, Julia. Yeah. I need to go back to I need to go back to the first song one more time about heavy. I mean about move. This is Lilius. You always would do this riff, and I got a clip of it when you go, please move. It's such a great to go from a D to an F and then you hit an F again. This is you doing it when we did the country on the Rosie show. But I'm obsessed. I've heard so many bootlegs, and you always do it. It's always please move. I'm obsessed. Here, take a game of this one. Yeah. Whoa. I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> My Neil. My goodness. Good I God mean, Almighty. Come on. It's yeah. not me. Okay, it's then Sharon, me. I got to God. Sharon, you I feel like Sharon, you you know, so many people do a lot of riffs, and so much of your Effie was about your crazy lung capacity. Like at the end when you like, um, you're gonna love, you know, me, that whole that whole ending when everyone's going, me, oh love me. And you're just literally holding that note. Was that a choice? It's sick, like, it's just like a truck over the audience. I'm obsessed with it, that crazy lung capacity. <laughs> um it it was a it was um the best way that I could express the the pain. Like I just remember. You know, there are a lot of things when you play a role that has more experience and maturity than you actually do in life. There's a lot of work that I have to, that I chose to do um, to layer it. And, you know, I, she, you know, just ha having, being pregnant and having the, you know, all of that stuff that hadn't, it hadn't happened to me. So, I really had to imagine it. And because like I said, I'm an actress first, but it that's how it always, you know, I didn't, I, it, it could, I, I couldn't let it go until I could let it go. Hmm. If that makes sense. It's, it's but, held. But it wasn't the, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't the same, you know, every night cause that does, none of us do that, but it was just the thing of, I, I can't let it go until until I'm empty, basically, mm -hmm. because there was so there was so much pain involved, and in that moment, that that is before um, before that before that number. So it's also called the genetic capability to hold a note for four and a half minutes. So right. let's. And can I say she does that? Oh, yeah, she does Green Girls because I did Janice with Sharon Brown. Oh, look, look at that! You see the poster? Oh, you got. Oh. And, and there's um, a song that she sang every, and we would be in the wings and we'd be like, okay, how long? Oh, okay, we, we're going a little longer tonight. All right. Yeah. I mean, like, this is what she does. I mean, 
And it's amazing. It's actually amazing to watch it every night because it, it's yeah. consistent. Yes. Do you remember in Dream Girls when um heavy heavy when they have to come back through the um what is it y'all help me uh, my 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 her and Alicia when they had to um, hold that note and they had a battle yes they um, held it forever because yeah. I'm Martha Walker is listening today I know she's she not on that with her long time is our new show. Is she on? Okay. Anisha, Anisha, somebody has to give her Anisha my number. I miss her so much. And I, I will do that. All right. So let me tell. So Arnisha, since you're watching, the great thing about Arnisha is that when you, uh, Arnisha Walker, for everybody who played Laurel in, in our cast, when you are just listening to her sing and you're fortunate enough to perform with her, you know, she doesn't lead with her story. So after you are not down, eight shows a week by her voice and then you find out she has asthma mm -hmm. and that yeah. one of her lungs like does, right. yeah that's that's what so yeah. that, that comes after you're you're like you're one of the greatest singers i've ever heard oh, but sure. what i what i loved about that's so funny Fusha, that you're mentioning that because not only did we not plan it right we we had such a synergy that that just it was like oh are we going there because we right. were and then it became something that was, it was just that other level of intensity that, and we both knew when to let it go. Exactly, yeah. It was, it was like you- It was you, perfect. No, it was, it was brilliant. Uh, yeah. With yeah. the person, yeah, Anisha's the bomb. Really yeah, I tell you, you're, you're all the bomb. Yes, we are. Can, I, can I shout out Yvette real quick because she got that Dream Girls poster behind her. And may I say, that it was so, I was so proud and godly proud oh. to see an Effie represented when she was in oh. that movie playing Beyonce's mother. Yes. And Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let you. Us have it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Let us have it. That was that oh. was a moment of that talk about a moment, you know, because Dream Girls was my first show. And then, and I think we all had been hearing about movies through the whole, even when Green Girls was on Broadway. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. something. And in this, and again, I had to, I was like in the last part of those auditions. Like, I mean, I was in the A, B, C, D, probably the D group. And I had just went in, I went in and did it and I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I was blessed. Yeah, that was amazing. And I'm honored represent. To, to thank you to be a part and to represent the community like we did. And I have to say my first day of shooting, as you know, we always shoot out of sequence. It was hard to say goodbye. I mm -hmm. literally, and I was dressed and beautiful, walked onto the set and I heard that music, boom, 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 boom and I bawled. Mm -hmm. And Bill Condon, bless his heart, and who was so good and so patient, he let me have that moment and of course I had to go back to the trailer. <laughs> but I didn't even expect it to hit me like, like it just hit me like that moment. And and Michael Bennett and Michael Peters, because he didn't get to see that. Right. And, I thought, and I thought Bill Condon did a really wonderful job in keeping the integrity of the piece because it wasn't, it's not an easy piece. I didn't know if we would be able to bring it to film. So thank you, Keisha, for that beautiful compliment. Um, it was, it will and always be an honor. I, I really do treasure this. Yeah. It do. was special. I was telling Fuchsia, I got a chance to meet Jennifer Hudson when she was wearing purple. Wow. And I said to her, I wanted to make sure, I said, you know, I wish that I could have gotten to you when you were first cast, but I'm going to speak for all the OG Effies. Come on. <laughs> and say, baby, you did your thing. Oh, my God. And it was Awesome. No, I embarrassed myself in the in the theater, but not really because I was like everybody should be having that. I screamed, I screamed because I was like, this is not a regular movie moment. You have to give her a standing ovation. And I scre I screamed, and I was crying my elbows out. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah, amazing. yeah. You know, everybody, yeah. everybody is amazing because Jennifer Holiday set the bar so freaking high. That's yeah. true. That it's so hot away from her. You can't. So we're, we're all able to say this because a bar, a bar was was set, and I did um, a one night only uh, at the Ford Theater in Los Angeles with uh, Shirley Ralph and Loretta Devine and Jennifer Holiday, and they asked me to do it, 
And it was literally a moment where, where I was like, I knew all of them because Jennifer also played my dad's wife in a, the gospel truth. And um, I knew all of them, but it doesn't matter when you know, when you know somebody, but they're also the legendary dreams. So I was like, my jaw was open. And the entire time, my, 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 my mom said when she saw, like a, there was footage of it, the entire time that I was singing with them, I was like this, because I was like, I'm with the dreams. <laughs> I'm with, you know, and, and Jen was, was there. And I was like, you know, it's, I will say that um, because, okay, so we have really a Tony winner of this group, okay? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've known Lilius forever, but then there's Lilius, the legend, you know? So like, it's like, I know Lilius, but sometimes when we're like, because we've done a million, you know, benefits and things together, but then when you watch her and you're like, that's Lilius White, you know, it's that. It's yeah. that where you're like, you can, you can separate your friendship from being the fan, you know? Yeah. So yeah, when that bar is yeah. across from us doing the life when we did play on, we, we weren't there long. They were killing it. They were killing it. And I got to see you and I just I went bananas. I lost my mind. I lost <laughs> my absolute mind. I, I had a ball. Oh, we are Tony. And um that's the beauty too of this group, guys. I, I mean, we have celebrated, we've been so blessed to work with each other, to celebrate each other, um, yeah. each other and so many things. I, I mean, I get to, I had before, you know, pre uh, the pandemic with Miss Ross Ryan, we got to kick it a couple of times. Ross. And Sharon, and I hope, and Keisha, I still yeah. stay in touch. And it's such an, a really, really wonderful group. We really should kind of write a book because there's a lot of stories. Oh my God. What do you say, Ross, to get off a of mute? Ross, take it off a of mute. You're on mute, Rod. Okay, I want to hear you. I said I'm not. I am. You're on. I said there's no change in the names. You got to change the names. Tell. Don't change any names. Hilarious. You know what? You get to this stage in life, you don't care no more. It's all beautiful stories. Yeah. And every story is not positive. Some of the shit is, oops. Some of the stuff is. <laughs> Lily has already, already blessed us with that. One. But you did. I can take you, my man. <laughs> Hold on, also, can I can I mention real quick? Yeah. Also, one of us who passed on from this family oh. recently, Lawrence Clayton. Yes. Lawrence, Lawrence Clayton, Clayton. Yeah. yes. Just what a to boy. mention his name. He was my first yeah. CC. Yeah. He was my CC. He was my too. Brilliant, brilliant performer. Brilliant kind of gentleman. Sweetheart yeah. of a band. Yeah. I had a big crush. I saw him in Color Purple. I last saw him in Color Purple. Amazing. Yeah. He's a beautiful yeah. singer. Yeah. 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 You just saw him at an, when I say just saw him, it sounds really cliche until you have to say something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. You're like, wait, we were at an audition and it's like, this, it's hideous. It's really yeah. hideous. He's yeah. on a Myths and Hymns recording. He sounds amazing on that. Uh, he sings that song. Right at the opening number. I'm obsessed with his voice. Wait, I've got to first play Sharon's Inappropriate Crazy Lung Power, which I'm... Uh, obviously you're, not a, you're not a smoker. Listen to this power, the length of time. <laughs>
Yes. Wow. Yes. Woo! I don't just think you know, I don't you remember the one where she she was stage uh stage left holding that note and walking slowly back to the center of the stage. And she held that note the whole time. Wow. And, and I, I, I think it was like past the music. I don't know, but it was, a, oh my it was consistent too. I mean, it was every night, every night. It wasn't a fluke. It wasn't like no. one of those things. It was every night. Not every at all. Night. All right, yeah. ladies, before we go, Sharon Brown had the bright idea that we try to do um, It's All Over as Ooh, various- yeah. Oh my God. Just, wow. you know, sort of basically pick pick a time to come in. So hold on. I'm going to go to the piano. You can <laughs> see. <laughs> <what. laughs> <laughs> I've been looking <laughs> over. No. Hey, I'll be and I'll be Jimmy Early. Okay. <laughs> I'll be Jimmy <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay you guys now, it, man. I'll be I'll be Jimmy early because that's I'm in the basement these I'm days. Me, right? I'm no. CD. Okay, what is all this basement thing? And what is happening? Can you stop it? And why I stop it? It's all a right. pandemic, honey. Ain't nobody warm. Ain't nobody <laughs> warm. <laughs> Listen, this is the first time. You know I'm what time, time it is. <laughs> oh, oh, you should be warm by now. Oh my all right. god. Oh, so it's, 10 o'clock. Your... it's time for that 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock number. Keisha, right. you're Curtis. Go, Anyone else covering the mail park? Keisha, you're Curtis. Anybody who's doing a Jimmy? No, no, no. You, you should I'm Curtis. Curtis. I'm Curtis. You no, should sorry. Curtis. I'm gonna be Jimmy uh, early. I'm and, uh, who's doing C Roz, what are you doing? I'm gonna be CC. CC. Oh CC, all right. Wait, this is called Dream Girls, not Dream Boy. <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to have 21. We're just I'm gonna yeah. mark the piano part. Fuchsia. There you are. Come on, Effie. Come on, Yep. Okay, wait, when you to play it, play it. Play it, Go ahead, Lillian. All right, once again. Come on, Fuchsia. Hit it. There you are, Effie. You're looking all over. Good. I turn my back and find myself out of the line. You could have warned me, but that would have been too kind. I've been warning you. Oh, you should. I'm sorry, I, I can't hear. Oh, I've man. been warning you. What happens? We get. <laughs> well, well, thank you again, Lily. Help me out, y'all. I turn my back and find myself out of the line. You could have warned me, but that would have been too kind. I've been warning, I'm warning you since Chicago. You've been late. You, I'm you a thin. You've been thin okay. and getting fatter all the time. You know what? I no, you're lying. You're lying. She never been so thin. You're lying. You're lying because you're knocking off that piece who thinks she's never been everybody. She ain't never been everybody. She's nothing but common. Now, who you calling copy yourself for serving? Serving for not professional. Everybody. You as common piece, he's knocking yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> now you <laughs> listen to me, Miss Blade of the world. See, I put up with you for much too long. I have put up with your bitching. I put up with your crying. All of your screaming, too. Yes. Thank you. Stay out of this, Laurel. This is between Dina and me. Yeah. yeah. It's between me too. I'm much a part of this. And I'm tired. Whatever it is. Problems you're making. I always knew you two were together. What? I always knew you two would gang it up on me. Hey, now watch your tone. Don't blame it on Laurel. Now she had nothing to do with this change. It was you. You always thinking of you. All you can do is rent and rain. You think a star is a king. Wake up, baby. A star is a slave. I knew, now you I knew were trouble. you were trouble from the start. Damn. You were, you were trouble from the start. <laughs> you were right now. Trouble. <laughs> to have you tear it apart. Go, Go ahead. 
and rant and scream and shout. Yeah. Don't worry, baby. I'll buy you out. Come on, Ross. Lay off it. Nothing. Nothing. Just take the money and run. Oh, they bought your black ass too, huh? Oh, cool. I said, oh, cool. cool. it up This time you've gone too far. I can go further. I can go further. I can go further. I can go around this. What I've seen in the fights in this business. Between all of you, this is none of my affair. Yeah, it's between you two now, sister. What? This snow yeah. job is as much your sin. Look at me. Oh, look, look at, at me. me. How oh, much did you put up to, to get in? Now you watch your mouth, watch your mouth, Miss Heffy White, because I don't take that talk from no second rate fever who can't sustain. Jimmy Early. Yes. Wow. And for his audition, he did the fight scene. He did all the roles <laughs> yes. he did. He for he did. that audition. I I see see that. That. I you guys, you you help <laughs> someone heal. I said it before, but for real, since I had gallbladder surgery and I'm stuck in bed with a lot of pain, oh. this has completely been a fun and comforting night. Thank you, amazing women oh. and this show. Oh, oh. Man, uh, you guys, oh, that was so much fun. Oh, wow, Nina Hennessy, a former dream girl. She was one of the- Nina! Oh, Nina! Oh, Nina! Oh, Nina! Oh, Nina! Oh, gosh. Cadillac car ladies. All right, you guys, we have to have a part two. We never even got to act we two. Do. We got to right. do part two. Yeah. Down, down. Part two, more stories. Part two. Oh, there's so We're many gonna... stories. So uh, there's one there's more story. It's so great to see you all. It's great to see you all. I love you, girls. I love you too. See you all. Thank you. Love you. Tons of sweetness. James, thank you. We love you guys. James, thank you because this is a dream come true. Julia, for real. Thank you guys. Mommy, Lil, Julia, I will. Everybody. Put your phone oh, number here. I'll oh, put our phone numbers in the chat. In the put private chat. The chat. Okay. Guys, here's the private a... chat over here. Yeah, put it in the okay, private guys. chat. Uh -oh. Guys, here's your final you clip. Here's your final clip to say goodbye. Thank you and good night. Chaka Khan. Bye, everyone. Bye, <laughs> baby. Will the phone number stay up long enough? Yeah, just put it in the private chat. Yeah. Love you guys. Thank love you. you. Guys. Love, you. Love, you. love you guys. Bye. Thank you. I love you all. Bye, love guys. Love, 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 love. 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 Love, love, love.